That's awesome. All right. Well, with that positive note, then we'll kick off episode five here of uh, conversation with community. I've got Nima, right? Nima. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. A local boy. He's also yes. from the uh, Bay Area, which is I'm I'm not quite from the Bay Area. I'm just outside the Bay Area, but at least I could drive to your house if I needed to, yeah, <laughs> rather than it. Sweden or Brazil or something like right. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, the time zones definitely aligned. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to be recording at nine o'clock at night instead of you know four thirty in the morning or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this but, is my uh, time hour too. So yeah. So, but Nima, he hit me up a couple of days ago and was reading was reading your thing and it, I thought it was a great great idea your whole you. your whole uh, proposition was this idea of Playboy Cardi and and his sound and his music and the impact it has had on the music I guess in hip hop in general is the genre sure and the analogy of classical realistic paintings in impressionism that came in after it and how mm -hmm. people perceived and received impressionistic paintings compared to the old style and people didn't like it and it looked terrible right. and there was no skill and blah 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 so anyway that's kind of our our uh, our premise to begin with so Nima, man go for it you take off and and do your thing sure yeah no thank you i'm excited um so uh as i was mentioning i'm not uh i'm not you know in any way a, a sort of uh uh authoritative figure on art history but yeah this one thing yeah. i was thinking um you know I, I took one art history class back in college and and one of the things that uh that struck me was that impressionism which which now uh, you know you see impressionistic painting sort of all the time maybe without even knowing it um when it first came around uh, on the scene in europe and france in in the 19th century uh it was rejected by mainstream artists you know the, uh, or the critics called it, it, it they said it was just sketches I was thinking, you know, what does it do? Impressionism sort of captures a moment in time. Uh, it's a feeling. It doesn't have, you know, well-defined lines or it doesn't sort of strive to, to create photorealistic images or, or even um, or even sort of depict broad ideas like the heavens or, or yeah. sort of grand yeah. struggles. It, it's just literally a moment in time. Um, and it could be anything from, uh, you know, people having a picnic, which is an, one of the first ones that comes to mind, um, a, a, a sort of snapshot of a bustling boulevard or, or even just like an empty river, something like that. Um, and, and oftentimes the painting style, uh, you know, it's almost blurry. It's like, it's like you just sort of turned your head and you're looking at the scene yeah. right at that moment uh, yeah. as your eyes are adjusting, you know. I think um, about um, what is it, the slow shutter speed with a camera with with motion. You get that motion right. blur, yeah. No, exactly. Um, so, uh, and I was thinking of that, and uh, it, it sort of hit me recently of how I, I feel like there's an analogy with that, and why Cardi's music, Playboy Cardi's music, is um, so captivating to me. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, and they, they said on your comments, and uh, you know, many of them super eloquently. Uh, 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 regarding the appeal of cardio is that, you know, he, he has this, the word vibe is used a lot, which uh, I think is fair and, and that he, he's hypnotic. He just captures this feeling. And to me that I, I said, Hey, that's the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, and it, but, but it also has staying power the way impressionism does it, it, this balance between it's such an in the moment immediate thing, but then you keep wanting to come back to it, I think is really special. But Cardi's music, just like that, it's like sugary bursts and immediate vibe, you know, uh, the undefined lines, the vocals uh, uh, blend with the instrumentation. And you don't really know what he's saying all the time. Um, and even though there's so much seemingly empty space, it, you're sort of super captivated and um, uh, it's deceptively simple. Um, so it captures a moment in time in the same way, I feel. And in, the, in this, a similar vein, it's been rejected by a lot of the sort of mainstream or old guard uh, you know, rap fans or music critics in general as, you know, not technically sound. This isn't what rap is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the rap is about a, a certain structure, lyrics doing this, you know, um, and he sort of deconstructed that and it's uncomfortable and, and it, it sort of seems to many as uh, lazy or not technically sound. Uh, but I think it's about that emotional impact. Uh, and I, you know, I think it's really interesting that sort of art throughout the ages you know, it's an ebb and flow. We have these yeah. same reactions to things. Yeah, I think it. I think it's an incredible analogy. I think it's a honestly, it's a perfect analogy because it lines up so well with like everything that you just said in terms of of 
especially the rejection side of it. I, I mm. really, that to me is the most compelling part of this whole analogy. This, this argument is, yeah, there is this, there's this structure. I don't want to say like a power structure, but like you're saying the old guard, these, sure. the, the old artists, the guys that used, they were the masters, the masters. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they were on top of everything. They kind of got to define what the art was and what was good and what was bad. And, and even the, I'll get on board with, I'm also not an art history major at all. I know very little, but I even learned, um, I guess there were times too, where you couldn't even paint, even if you're a really good painter and you were accepted to be a good painter and you were allowed, mm -hmm. allowed to paint, you had to paint specific themes or specific sure. images. You couldn't just paint whatever you wanted. No, no, no. It had to be a certain thing. Right. And so that Otherwise even, you would get funded. Right, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And that's a great point too, because painting was really expensive back then. And if you didn't have somebody who was essentially sponsoring you, you couldn't do it. It was very exactly, difficult. Yeah. And so it's just neat that, like you're saying, this guy comes in kind of out of nowhere and just completely spins everything around and the old mm -hmm. guards pissed off about it. But, and then too, there's the second part of your analogy of how it just captures that moment. Mm -hmm. Have you watched that? that youtube video it's the the professor talking about the anti concert have you seen that no no i was directed to that by some of the people i think it was during the dilate reaction right. and he breaks down the live performances of playboy cardi and why mm -hmm. they're so just energetic mm -hmm. and crazy and it's exactly like you say it's about capturing that feeling right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and even though it isn't necessarily like a rock show that I'm accustomed to where there's all these guys and they're playing their instruments and all the stuff's going on, even though it's just kind of him on the stage, he's got the light show. He's got the pyrotechnics. Right. He's got, he's got all that stuff going on and it's just fucking loud and people are going crazy and you should check it out. It's a really neat video. I don't, sure, yeah. I don't remember who, you know, the guy's name, but if you just type in anti-concert playboy Cardi, you'll, it, okay. it's about 40 minutes and it's an interesting listen and it feeds into almost everything. Like you just said here, this mm -hmm. comparison to compression or impressionism. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, uh, I, and I definitely agree. It, it extends to his live shows. Um, it, it, he does a good job, especially with whole lot of red, which is as many people have pointed out, sort of a, yeah. an album made for concerts. It's yeah. made to, you know, hear live on booming, deafening speakers, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and he's done a lot to sort of integrate that whole experience because he really, uh, like you said, he doesn't, uh, you know, he's not doing a lot of rapping live and, and, and it's a point of pride for a lot of rappers. And rightfully so, to really be able to rely on the ba a backing track as little as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. In their live performances, but that's not like smartly so. That's not what Cardi does. He he brings that experience to the stage. Um, so, which is why also, uh, you know, part of my thing with the impressionism thing is that it's all intentional. You know, it, it's right. still artistry because right. it's intentional. Yeah, it's um, not a mistake not, at all. Not at all. Yeah. Um, you know, I I. Uh, I was mentioning, you know, in my email and I was thinking about it, how layers is sort of a huge part of, of what I'm talking about and what Cardi does, you know, when you think about impressionistic paintings and uh, you were saying it allows you to sort of fill in the spaces as you go, it, it, it's sort of stark at first, but then your mind fills in the scene as you go along, the more you look at it and, and Cardi uses uh, empty space really well to his advantage. Yeah. Some of the things that, you know, I, I also really liked about him when I first started listening to him, uh, it, it was it was R.I.P. off Die Lit. And you just hear there's just this cacophony of uh, of ad libs in the background and and the way he uses his ad libs, not just so, sort of to just accent the last word that he said, but he's like building texture on the song and he's allowing this like he's allowing the song to have space without feeling empty. Um, and and that's intentional. That's an artistic decision. And even though it kind of sounds silly at first, uh, it's I don't think like the technical uh, and sort of artistic vision of that should be discounted. It's part of the reason that he has such a such a big appeal, you know? Yeah. I mean, in some ways, you could almost say that the old guard as skilled as they are at at lyrics and rhyme and flow and all that stuff. You could. I mean, I, I, I won't say it because I'll get ripped to shreds in the comments. <laughs> but you could almost say that maybe that's almost one dimensional. Now, sure. now they're really good at that one dimension. But mm -hmm. I mean, maybe Playboy Cardi, what he's doing. Okay, yeah, he can't rap like some of these other guys can. But 
like you're saying, he's doing something that's completely different and it's so different. People almost don't know what it is. Like Definitely. What, what's going on? What are these weird yeah. sounds? I don't get it. I don't like it. I'm not used to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's jarring. And, and I think for a lot of people, um, and again, back to the impressionism uh, uh, example, it, it's challenging, but in a way that doesn't immediately feel like you're being challenged, right? It's like, oh, yeah. this is simple music. This is hype music or party music or just dumb music. But it's challenging. And, it, you know, that's why it's sort of left such a where, you know, there's a bunch of music that is sort of is there is lazy music out there. And there is lazy music that um, that uh, makes an impact, um, which is totally fine. But it's it, it's more that like, it, it's, it's the things that see, make it seem like it's so simple and almost void of substance that make it so substantial. Yeah, it's a trick. It's mm -hmm. a trick, yeah. man. It really and is. it's on purpose. Yeah. yeah. And it's something, you know, I I enjoyed Whole Lot of Red a little bit more than Die Lit. Sure. But I, I still haven't gone back to Die Lit with headphones. I need to go back with headphones yes. and listen again. Yeah. A lot of people have said that. But I remember just, you know, Whole Lot of Red was a challenge just because I hadn't heard lyrics used in that way right. a voice used in that way so that was a challenge but i got used to it and with those heavier rock elements it was easier for me to soak into it Definitely. but with but with die lit so many people have said oh it's my favorite that's my favorite one like they enjoy a whole lot of red but die lit is the go-to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and even for me still having uh, having that understanding hearing their perspective you know like you're describing with these weird echoes and sounds that he does and stuff like that mm -hmm. i still feel myself being tricked because right for whatever reason, there's a mechanism in my brain that goes, oh, here's lyrics and here's sound. And therefore I'm expecting this pattern. Mm -hmm. And when I don't hear it, I go, huh? Like, it's not right. that it's bad or I dislike it, but it's just, it's still very jarring and it's so strange. And <laughs> it cracks me up because I keep picturing somebody who is this classic Renaissance master painter Mm -hmm. walking up to some impressionistic thing going, what's this shit? What the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> this isn't anything like, Oh, shit on a a couple, yeah. Like, I guess that's a bush and that's a tree. And like, did it take them 20 minutes to do this? But no, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot more going on than people realize. Definitely. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> um, and I, I, uh, I, I'm one of the people who I got into Cardi with Dilit. Um, and a lot of people say it's a grower and I totally understand. Um, to me, it was a sort of on immediate impact. Um, and, and it's funny. It was the, I, I don't know why I did this. I usually never do this. Uh, I almost always start an album at the beginning. I, you know, I'm, I'm very sort of true to the album form. Mm. Uh, but for whatever reason, I started with the third, I think it's the third track beans for real. Um, oh, okay. And, yeah. And it's which is really one of the most repetitive ones that I'm on the beans for real. Yeah, you know, the, yeah. The, and I and I was just like, this is what the this is fucking awesome. Like the, I, I am I am having such a good time right now. Uh, just listening to this and and I've I've never heard something like this. And this should I even thought this should feel like it's stupid, but uh, I you know I, I want to hear a lot more of this and and I'm entranced. I'm I'm hypnotized and it kept repeating and repeating. Um, that's uh, wild. I mean, my it, experience it, was almost completely different. Right. And and again, I've told people before too. I I think it's it's obviously it's me because I mean I'm the one listening and having this experience. But I've told other people, a couple people in the comments about how I think because I've listened to rock for hell almost almost thirty years now, mm -hmm. and I have such a love for lyrics and listening to the lyrics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There is just something in my brain where as soon as soon as somebody says words i'm mm -hmm. listening in that in that function i'm trying to listen right. to what they're saying and i'm trying to understand what they're saying and right. so when a track like that comes on and he says i'm on the beans for real 10 times in a row i'm like yeah is is the machine broken like what what has happened <laughs> you know like it yeah, completely yeah. throws me for a loop man it's right. wild i want to ask you said dialect was your was your first experience with playboy cardi that's correct, yeah. What were you listening to beforehand? Like, what kind of music were you into where it was just easy for you to drop into something like Dilet? Um, So I also, like, grew up with, like, classic rock. Uh, you know, like, Pink Floyd has been my favorite band okay. throughout my life. Um, 
And then you know, I have a huge, huge uh, soft spot for 90s alt and grunge. And I, I actually have a little bit of a comparison why I think both of those things appeal to me too. There's a similarity, Cardi, and believe it or not, grunge. Okay. Um, but we, that we could get into later. But um, uh, and then and then I was also listening to rap, and and it, and it was a good sort of mix of um, uh, old school, you know, 90s rap, uh, Nas, the old Three Six Mafia type stuff, uh, and then the newer stuff. You know, the 2010s, the the first half of it when I was in when I was in high school, it you, you saw the emergence of artists like Kendrick and then uh, you know the, the underground ones like Danny Brown and Earl so it, it was like it was a very good time for rap coming from you know a more sort of the bling age still had a lot of good stuff the 2000s but you rap as an art form felt like it was coming back that album felt like it was coming oh, back. oh I see I see uh, and, and uh and so that was a lot of the stuff I was into you know uh, but I would say it, it, the last album from Die Lit that hit me on first impact like that um since at from that point and i might get i might get flamed for this but it was the last one that since then was um to pimple butterfly from kendrick which came out i think 2015 um and so nothing really hit me on on first listen when i listened to that album the first time i was just like wow like th yeah. this is i it felt like a vanguard for music yeah um and when i listened to dilate in 2018 i hadn't really gotten into that sort of soundcloud rap it, that's also the other thing. I, it, it was the introduction through Cardi. I got more into, uh, you know, Young Thug and Lil Uzi Vert. Um, these things that I didn't know were there, but uh, it, it, it so it uh, the newness of it was actually really exciting to me because I was sort of entering a phase where I felt like okay, that that really exciting new stuff from that first half of the 2010s. I haven't really been hit by like that. Um, oh, I from, see from a rap album or a new album at all you know i was kind of going back into the more 90s stuff i was i was rediscovering old uh you know classic 90s bands and i was having a good time doing it but when it came to music that was being released it wasn't nothing was has had really spoken to me as much to in the previous two years and then so i, I just sort of randomly gave it a shot because i saw some discussion about it online uh True. and and that that flip kind of switched um and so yeah i don't know and and it's sort of some of it is unexplainable right like what what are the various sort of butterfly effect things that got me to my life that yeah <laughs> made me a playboy party fan but uh yeah that, that was a sort of moment in time where i was i was sort of ready to receive it you know and it, it's so cool i mean one thing i love about music is there's so much subjectivity like somebody could love mm -hmm. something and then somebody else can just hate the same thing and there's who knows why or how that ever comes to be but like Right. Do you have any any kind of like techno in your background as far as music, like Crystal Method or anything like that? So the the techno that's in my background isn't it, it's it's not really techno. It is, but it's it's Persian music. You know, oh. when I grew up uh, going to old Persian parties, um, it, you know, modern per Persian music, especially in the twenty ten two thousands twenty tens, very techno driven, like really pure like Euro pop okay. type of stuff. Um, but still very incredibly melodic um and and these sort of soaring vocals that that uh, they're soaring but they're simple and uh i hear a little bit of that not in playboy cardi as much but like some artists like young thug and little uzi vert when they really go higher um there's just some things even my parents when when they've heard in the background have sort of commented the same thing that it it, it mimics the like almost classical iranian vocalizations uh, but so that's the most I've gotten exposure in terms of like electronic music. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I mean, so, so do, how much do you think that that style of music, the Persian music, kind of eased you? Well, I keep saying, you know, it's interesting. I'm 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 listening to you, and I, I kind of have these ideas, and I realize I keep trying to shape everything around my own bias of the fact right. that I just wasn't really into dial it, you know? Right. Right. And so <laughs> I keep trying to find the reason, like how <laughs> or why, you know, but... Well, to be fair... Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I, all I was going to ask was, when you listened to Dial It, did you, did you notice any kind of association with some of the Persian music that you're talking about? I mean, was there something that resonated there or not? I, I don't think not immediately. I think I sort of made that connection more when I was listening to, like, getting more into Young Thug. Okay. Um, yeah, because, you know, he does this thing where... It's this very particular vocal line where he almost, uh, you know, I, I don't want to, I can't belt it out. I don't have that range. <laughs> um, but, uh, 
that that's what kind of hit, hit me with it. But I think more broadly, it's about a sense of melody um, and, and really sort of making that the focus. I, I funnily enough, I, I don't, I can't really get into instrumental music, which is why I can't, I couldn't get into a lot of like more traditional EDM. Interesting. I, I, I need vocals, but I don't necessarily need it. I don't need sort of lyrics like that, that, that hit me on immediate impact. And, and in fact, if you are going to have lyrics that are obviously intended to do that, I feel like I have a higher standard for those. Oh, for those sure. Lyrics. And, sure. And so that if, if it doesn't, you know, if I if I don't feel like it's the type of poetry that speaks to me, it almost ruins the song. Whereas uh, the fact that the vocals can blend so well in with an instrumental in a Cardi song, be an instrument, but still be vocals, still be a person that is that is contorting their voice um, and that uh, it, it is painting images of some sort, although they're not sort of, the, you know, they're not teeming with depth or anything, but <laughs> sure. you, 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 you there are things you know he starts the whole lot of red with never too much never too much yeah repeat yeah. over and over again that's a feeling that's an impact right there you know what this album is about to be about yeah uh the excess of it the maximalism so um so it, it's interesting in that regard but I, yeah i don't think the persian music has has blended as much explicitly um with, with the sort of cardi um but i was gonna say also I, I think it totally makes sense where you're coming from having first of all having like you know the musical background that you have in terms of what you like but also having listened to a whole lot of red first um yeah yeah i think if i listened to a whole lot of red first and then i went to die lit i would have i would have probably felt underwhelmed too uh because it it's which is why a whole lot of red was so much like more fun to listen to hearing that progression like wow he did this and now he's doing this sort of very much different way louder thing it's still cardi and it's still really fun um but but it, going from from a whole lot of red to die lit, it it seems like um, you know it seems like he's doing a lot less. It feels I'm sure it feels a lot more empty. Um, you know, like it, just in terms of sonically, it's there's a lot less to grasp onto. Whereas like whole lot of red almost is like constantly necessarily engaging. Yeah, and, and obviously more rock influence. So I think for me, it's just I I have so much love for distortion mm -hmm. and bass and things that are mm -hmm. just hitting like that and and die yeah. lit. But, but another thing that was interesting for me with a whole lot of red was I found myself drawn more to the lighter tones in the song. So like the mm. back half of the album, I kind of enjoyed mm. more, even mm. though it didn't necessarily run off of a lot of the heavy distortion that the front half has. Right. And so then I think, well, then I should really enjoy Die Lit. And again, I need to just go back and listen to it again because it's been a while. Sure. I need to listen to it again. Sure. But when I was spending my one week with Dial It, I, yeah, I kind of found myself in that spot of, well, okay, yeah, it's cool. And I, mm -hmm. I do remember when I was driving, I had a drive where I listened to it just twice in a row, back to back. Mm -hmm. And I and I did get into that sense of my my mind was drift, drifting off, you know, that, that mm -hmm. drive where you all of a sudden you're there two hours later, and you're like, mm -hmm. how the fuck did I get here? <laughs> it was that kind of experience. And the music definitely played into that. Mm -hmm. But even when you when you said, you know, never too much, I was there. Like I'm already mm -hmm. like starting to jam to that right away. But with right. Die Lit, yeah, nothing really like snapped me really hard that way. Mm -hmm. no, no, yeah, definitely. It's uh and I, I think I think part of it for me when it was when I initially listened to it, um, was that it was the newness of it for me. Um it, that I it it was almost scratching an itch. I never knew that I that I needed to be yeah, have yeah. scratch, you know. Um, yeah. And I think if anything, the uh, maybe the the sort of the vibe of Die Lit again. I'm I'm uh, I'm attracting probably warranted criticism here, but <laughs> it, it's one of those things that sort of attracted me to Pink Floyd too. It's it's atmospheric. It's ethereal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pink Floyd will sort of harp on you know maybe the same four chords for mm -hmm. thirteen minutes, you know, and and, and they'll let it sort of sit. And simmer, and and they'll they'll have a huge atmosphere behind it, but then you feel like you're floating in space. Yeah. Um, and it, and it sort of brought a, a modern rap element. It was like that, but you know we're we're now in the 2010s, the late 2010s, and uh, you know it, it was sort of hitting those same brain waves. That is an interesting comparison. Like you say that, I immediately think of Shine On You Crazy Diamond. I mm -hmm. you're probably yeah. I mean that's that slow mm -hmm. slow intro and it builds and it gets going it's almost ambient music at first yeah you know? it really is yeah. it really is 
Well, so sticking with the the analogy of impressionism, mm -hmm. so we've got maybe we'll call Dilett. Well, actually, yeah, we couldn't really call that classical painting because Dilett was its own thing to begin with. Sure. It, that was sure. kind of the impressionism. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Now, a whole lot of red. Maybe you're starting to shift from impressionism to abstract. You know, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more aggressive. It's louder. It's darker. Where do you think Playboy Cardi is going to go next? Do you think he's going to push this envelope further? I, I think that's one of the really exciting part, things about Playboy Cardi. I think necessarily he will because he's done it every album. Uh, you know, I was mentioning earlier, I, I am somebody who still very much believes in the power of the album as sort of an artistic unit. Um, and Playboy Cardi has only released three albums since 2017 and, that, and three albums since he really got famous or started to blow up in, I think, what, like 2015? Uh, is when he had some, you know, his very early songs okay. uh, that, that that started to gain some traction, which, you know, sound almost unrecognizable now to like, the, in terms of like the vocal, uh, what he's doing with his voice. But so he takes his time with them. I mean, Whole lot of Red was, we thought we were going to get it maybe even the year before. Um, and I think he does that because he wants to make um, an artistic statement with each album, uh, you know, much in the way that a lot of great, a lot of great artists to do Kanye does that you know Pink Floyd does that right yeah, they, they came yeah. they, they came with something new every time a new theme a new sort of aesthetic um so in terms of what he's gonna do I I really don't know um I I I don't know if he's gonna sort of lean I, I could see him almost leaning harder into really aggressive vocals the rasp and and sort of almost like blending some of like the hyper pop stuff that is uh, bleeding its way into the mainstream with uh with with more of the th like lyrical themes that he has and and like making it almost like more punkish type vocals yeah um like and maybe really he has the latitude now that he he doesn't really need to if he doesn't want to have a hit he doesn't need to have one he can really just push into whatever he wants um but i'm i'm very interested you know that that's another cool thing about sort of being a Cardi fan is that, you know, you're going to, you're, you're going to be entertained and sort of, uh, it's, it's going to be a new horizon when the next thing comes, at least it has been so far. Um, so I, I'm very interested to see what it is and we don't know when we'll get it. We'll, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. He, I'm excited. Ghost, so. I feel like, uh, I feel like there's a lot of room still. Like, you know, if you, sure. if you look at, if you talk about the elements that you, that you've talked about as far as what you enjoy with Playboy Cardi and what he does there, and especially I look at Dilate and Whole Lot of Red and the growth, like huge growth in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I feel like that growth is still there. He can keep going. Sure. Especially if, I don't know if you've heard, what do they call them? Like the narcissist edits or something, or he's he's doing these guitar yeah. riffs on top of the sh on top of the music at the live shows. Is that what he's doing? Yeah, the uh, he, he's I, I've seen him sort of, uh, uh, he's mixed up his songs and, and he's added uh, yeah more like rock intros I've seen. Yeah. Something and like and that. then it builds up and, and then it, the, the beat hits. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it, I feel like whatever it is, it still will be like rooted in modern trap, you know, with the, with the trap drums of, of, of some, of some capacity, sure. you know, same sort of BPM and all that kind of stuff. Uh, which is like a, a, another thing that I think Cardi is sort of underrated for again, in terms of his technical ability, is what he does with his voice and that's and how he pushed his voice from uh, Die Lit to Whole Lotta Red. Um, you know, and, and please stop me if I'm getting off track here, but I, I was also, just before today, I was, I was sort of thinking like, there's these things that I like about grunge and, uh, um, you know, my favorite grunge artists and, and, and their vocals and that I loved, loved to hear in Die Lit. And yeah. like the biggest part of it was the rasp. You know, I, I'm a huge, huge fan of of Kurt Cobain's voice, Nirvana, obviously in general. But I don't like Kurt Cobain's voice is so unique in how it's both so like raspy and raw, but it's very melodic. He has such a great sense of melody. Yeah, he's not just like you know screaming. Um, and 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 his words were often garbled. That whole '90s yeah. scene, right? Yeah, it, it it caught a lot of flack for uh from from you know again the mainstream culture. For like, what are these guys saying? <laughs> you know, yeah. type of stuff. It, I don't know if you've seen the, the obviously Weird Al. Yes, the, where he's got the um, cotton balls or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and 
There's a skit on Mad TV where they have like five Eddie Vedders and they're all singing in the same like, <laughs> you know, peanut butter on the top of your yeah. mouth type. Uh, but I love that. I love that style. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm a, uh, uh, amateur artist myself i produce and i do some vocals myself and i feel like since uh, i tried to like i tried to s learn how to sing like cobain for so long and that's like it's permeated everything now and then cardi kind of does this too he has this rasp he's uh the whole mumble rap sort of you know as a movement they're garbling their words and, and now they're using autotune to help them do it yeah and uh, uh, and and it sounds like its own language but that it's so fun you know it's part of the appeal it's something new but still, you know, enticing. Uh, and I was just thinking that's funny. It's, you know, there's there's this tenuous link in my mind between Kurt Cobain and, and Eddie Vedder and, and what the mumble rappers are doing now. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's a great point. I hadn't really considered that, honestly. Like, I remember that too when Nirvana came out because I, I was never a huge Nirvana fan. I mean, I listened to them and I enjoyed them, mm -hmm. but I always, I enjoyed Alice in Chains more. I'm a huge, that's the number one for me. Alice in Chains, Alice in Soundgarden, yeah. I was a big yeah. Stone Temple Pilots fan. I felt like yeah, those guys, I felt like they did it better than Nirvana. I mean, that was just me. <laughs> but your point about their voices and the way they sing and how you can't understand them, I don't really recall having as much of a problem with it with them mm -hmm. for some reason. I don't know why. But when I think of Cardi, for whatever reason, you know, I, obviously it's more of a challenge. Sure. I, I don't know why, but it's a great analogy to make between them and playboy cardi and what he's doing in in the potential that exists in terms of him growing because i do feel like playboy cardi whether intentional or not he could almost slide into like a industrial rock sound if he absolutely if he kept going which i think would be sick <laughs> it would be sick i think it would be really sick like i'm i'm picturing when you were talking about that i was picturing okay what about what if Playboy Cardi did his version of Cherry Bomb? Like, mm -hmm. what would that sound like? Because mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy Cherry Bomb. I know that's a kind of a divisive album because it's so industrial and loud right. and distorted and shit like that. But I feel like something, an album style like Cherry Bomb, Playboy Cardi would just thrive in that kind of I environment. Agree. I agree, especially with the right mixing, you know, um, which he, he has. A lot of people can complain about the vocals being too loud and whole lot of red. I think it's perfect. I think it does exactly what it needs to do. Um, but if, if he's if his voice is sort of mixed in a way that's, you know, non-traditional. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I think I, I mean, imagine like a Trent Reznor produced. Playboy oh, Cardio, my God. You dude. know, <laughs> that would be gnarly. I, I, I think it would break music. It would. It'd be incredible. I think that it would be yeah. really incredible. That dude, what a collaboration! Trent Reznor and Playboy Cardi. <laughs> <laughs> Holy you can't not listen to that. <laughs> oh, I'd listen to it. I would listen to that big time. And you know what's cool? I mean, I don't expect it to ever happen. But what's neat about Trent Reznor, that guy, he's he's one of the artists I respect the most because he has shown me, and I mean, just everybody that when you pursue what you're interested in, it doesn't really matter if if people think it's a good idea or not. You you sure. pursue what you're interested in just do a really good job at it and mm -hmm. people will figure out, Oh, Oh yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool too. I guess I didn't realize, you know, it's been Great. so neat watching him break off and do um, soundtracks for movies and, and, and the scores. And he did a collaboration. I can't remember the girl's name. It's like Haley or something like that. And um, what was it? He did a couple albums with his wife with uh, how uh -huh. to destroy angels and all that shit. Like the guy just does whatever the fuck is he's interested in. Right. And, it, and it's great. I love him for it. Whether whether or not the music turns out to be something I'm totally into, I just love the fact that he's always pursuing something new, something sure. challenging, something that he's interested in. So yeah, maybe it's no, not entirely not. far fetched to see him and Playboy Cardi work together. <laughs> <laughs> I, that would be a fever dream. <laughs> Holy shit, that'd be wild. That would be wild. Uh, huh. we're, we're putting it out on notice right now. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Putting it in, at least in the universe, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm down. God, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I wonder, you know, if, if Playboy Cardi does continue this trend from, from dialect to whole lot of red and then from whole lot of red in that same direction of just mm -hmm. distortion, vibration, mm -hmm. bass, all that crazy stuff. I wonder how that will be received. You know? Mm -hmm. I, I remember 
I personally didn't experience, but I remember hearing from a lot of people who love Die Lit that when Whole Lot of Red came out, they're like, what the fuck is this? They just were not mm-hmm. into it. It took a while. Yeah. Did you have that I, experience? No, like, uh, like you, at this point, I think I might just, you know, have a, uh, 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 irrational uh, uh, <laughs> obsession with Cardi's music, yeah. but it, it's, it was the same thing. It was on a media impact. I was like, oh my God. Uh, and so I have a very distinct memory. It, it was Christmas Eve. It came out. Uh, we're very lucky here on the East Coast. We don't have to wait until until 12. Uh, I used to live in Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, period. yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I distinctly remember I just went in my car. Um, I, I, I had myself a blunt ready and I was like, okay, I was, I've, I've been waiting for this album for so long. And, and it, you know, I, the expectations you have in your mind, right? You've been waiting for an album for so long. Uh, uh, you, you're almost like ready to get disappointed because you, you have put these expectations so high on your, uh, on this, on this album of like, okay, is this going to have an, a musical sort of emotional impact? Like the first one did. But it's three years removed from the fact and, you know, you can never sort of uh, without you can't artificially recreate that same feeling. But it happened organically, you know, which is a testament to just sort of how it hit me. And the fact that I was like, man, this is because it's been it's been what I've been trying to do with my own music. But he hits it the way I've been trying to do it is that (laughs) you you have these rock vocals, you have this these sort of like these these raspy sensibilities you're yelling on the track. It, 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 there's a sort of cacophony behind you, but it's a trap brooded track. It, the, the melody is still there. Yeah. Um, and I was like, again, you know, it, it, it's it's beautiful that he could sort of hit another receptor. It's not the same receptor, but it also is, you know, rooted in the same thing. He, he, I, I think a lot of people, when they first listened to Whole Lot of Red, like you were saying, I was looking online too. The the initial uh, commentary was like, what, what a whole lot of trash. Yeah, yeah right. and i was reading it and i was like i understand i was listening to it and i wasn't like these guys don't understand music i i was like yeah i get it this is this is out there um but uh it it then you let it sit you let it marinate a little bit um and uh, it, 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 it's it's been a grower on a lot of people and i think it's because a lot of people wanted that die lit part two probably um, yeah and, and i don't know if you've listened to any of the leaks in between die i lit. have it so there's this whole whole lot of red version one, you know, it's it's like literally uh, enough CD quality leaks to make a whole album. And oh, that wow. what okay. people say would have been um, the first the first version of whole lot of red that was supposed to come out in uh, in 2019 and um, or earlier in 2020 in 2020, at least. Um, and and yeah, it wasn't like whole, it wasn't like the actual whole lot of red at all. Um, uh like neon for instance on whole yeah, lot of red yeah that was a, a an original leak and it's one of the only ones that and i think place was the t- only two that made it onto the actual whole lot of red okay um and but but that sort of those leaks were an extension of the, the, the dilit sound and e- even if that came out as its own album it, it would have been uh like a pretty decent progression he was doing new things with his voice he was leaning into the baby voice more um he, his his instrumentations were a little more you know even more ethereal and and compact than than die lit but then he came through with a whole lot of red and it was like oh my god you know he this isn't what we expected at all this is not these aren't the sort of uh uh spacey um you know uh, uh immediately melodic vibes that we hear from that we heard from the leaks and and from die lit we're, we're getting in your face yeah you know punk adjacent type music yeah. and and cardi rapping about you know how he's thinking about homicide at the top of his lungs and you're like what the fuck is going on here <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. but then you but then you like sit with it and you're like wow this is a lot to, this has a lot to offer and this is fun it's a fun album yeah i i remember that once i got over that first initial listen and, and worked through what was going on with the vocals and i was then i just started listening to it i was like oh yeah i get it i totally mm-hmm. get it i think there's a really key element of that album and and dial it as well is the fact that there's no space really between tracks they end mm-hmm. and then jump into the next one so you never get that moment of oh you never come out of the trance you know mm-hmm. you're just exactly. you're just in for the ride and then if you're one of those people that puts the album on repeat well then mm-hmm. it just goes forever <laughs> it never right. stops it absolutely it's just it's a cycle I, I, you're absolutely right like 
how often you hear a, a like a true blue intro on a Cardi track, you know, yeah, it, it, right. it sort of immediately punches you with yep. what it, with its musical statement. And then it prolongs it for the whole song. And, you know, you're able to just have fun with it uh, throughout the way and, and let it infect you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. So have you tried using the impressionist painting analogy on someone who's, who goes, nah, I'm just not into Cardi. I'm not into dialect a whole lot of it. Like, have you ever kind of tried to give them that perspective of what's happening with the music to try and sway their opinion a bit? Uh, yeah. You know, mostly w when you come to someone and you say, Hey bro, Cardi's impressionism. <laughs> it's <laughs> it, it, All right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, which I understand, you know, uh, I, I t like, I, I think if, I have talked about it with um, a friend of mine who is actually into Cardi, um, and I don't, I don't know if I, I think the impressionism thing is like sort of new in my brain, and I, I, I highly doubt I'm the first person to like. I don't think I, obviously, I didn't originate that concept, um, but uh, I think people who really like when it hits them, I don't think it's something that can sway somebody, um, honestly, because I, I, I think Cardi's music, I think people could have to sit with it more than anything. Um, maybe sitting with it with the understanding that it's not like you're not supposed to be looking for certain things. Yeah. Um, w would help, but I don't know if you know. From my experience, making an academic <laughs> has been met with more <laughs> ridicule because of the uh, of, of those same sort of qualities that impressionism was ridiculed for. Right. This is like, how are you going to tell me? Lamborghini parked outside purple like lean is we're going to have an academic dissection with <laughs> 19th century Monet, one of the most influential Western artists in the, of all time. Like, give me a break. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. Um, but uh, I, I think, it, you know, that's recency bias, right? You know, art is art th throughout the ages. Like I was saying, you know, our, our the humans have reactions to things and reactions dictate counter reactions and then culture moves forward, you know, and, and then within due time, things are seen as established. And I think Cardi will be seen as established and it already is in, in, in some degree, but w w within enough time, it will be, you know, what was sort of the, the sound of the time. Yeah. It will be interesting too, to see how his, how his career plays out musically. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, who knows how long his career will be and how long the, he makes music, but both in, where he goes with his music and what he chooses mm -hmm. to do. Like if he does do like something crazy industrial mm -hmm. like cherry bomb or whatever, or if he just fucking does another 180 on everybody, who knows? Right. But then after that all plays out and the dust settles, what people will think when they look back and listen to it again, you know, mm -hmm. what are people going to say about dial it 15 years from now or a whole lot of mm -hmm. red 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. especially if how they're influenced by the albums that are to come, it'll be, it'll just be really interesting to see where this goes. I'm, I'm excited. Right. Honestly, I think it's going to be a neat ride with Playboy Cardi and what he does, but who knows, man? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I, uh, and, and I think the, who knows, like you hit it on the head with that. We really don't, um, which, which is cool. Like, that's very cool. That, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I, I, I don't know if you've heard of currency, the rapper i don't think so um, no he, he's he been around for a little longer but um he, he puts out like i don't know six albums at least a year Holy constantly shit. putting out stuff yeah he, he's he's super prolific i love currency i he's one of my favorite rappers cardi actually now that i'm thinking of it cardi uh mentions currency as a uh as an influence in an interview back in the dialit days um and because somebody asked him you know did you think currency is influential on, on mumble rap because he's sort of he's more of a tradition he has a very he's very well respected in the rap community by sort of all all sorts of rappers um and he's been around since the 2000s but he he has this sort of lazy louisiana uh, New oh, Orleans okay. flow okay um but he he's just more of a traditional sort of lyrics guy um or at least a more traditional rapper over like you know sampled beats and stuff like that but Cardi was talking about the influence that Currency had on mumble rap and that that same sort of those same sort of vocal sensibilities, eating your words a little bit, which uh, is you know also a feature of the, the South, I guess. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it's funny that it, it, that's very cool um, that, that there's that connection. The thing I was gonna say about Currency is that you always know what you're gonna get with a Currency album, which isn't bad. It's a it's a known commodity. You know it's gonna be good for me, right? And and it, you know it's gonna hit a particular vibe, um, 
but w w when one comes out, it's not, you know, it's not going to sort of be earth shatteringly innovating, innovative at all. Right. Um, I like that Cardi sort of is one of those artists that he makes you sit and wait and, and you don't, you don't really, you're, you don't know until you hear it. You gotta, you gotta hit that first, you gotta hit play on that first song and then you're going to know what the card, this new Cardi sounds like and what, yeah. whatever this new era is. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, honestly, sure. it, it, it kind of. I already want to like lay down and just listen to light uh, dial it again. Like, okay, <laughs> let's, let's give it another chance because right. I, what I always love, what is it's the, the saying, you know, 50 million Elvis fans can't be wrong. Right. Like when, when there's mm -hmm. a, a huge fan base and they love the shit out of it, there's obviously something happening there. Right. <laughs> it's not just a bunch of people getting it wrong. Like there's something happening there. And one of the things I really enjoy doing is trying to figure out, okay, well, why, since it is so subjective and, and it is so open to anybody, if you just sit down and listen to it, what am I not getting? Like what, what's different in my ears or in my right. head that makes it harder for me to get into something, whatever it is, when right. somebody else can just be totally, totally into it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so this has been a lot of fun because you're like re-sparking interest in, in Playboy Cardi for me, even though awesome. I do right. enjoy a whole lot of red quite a bit. But now I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm going to listen to Dilet again. I got to listen to Dilet again. I'll try it tomorrow when I go to work. I'll probably throw it on and be like, all right, let's give it another go, man. Let's try it out again. <laughs> right. And I think the, the car is a great place for it. It uh, is. You know, it is great. You could be doing something, you know, you don't have to like sitting down and really sort of focusing on music just in general, you know. Uh, I don't know if Cardi is necessarily conducive to that for for unless you're really yeah you know uh, for 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 most people so uh, but yeah I mean it, but I think you're right like what you were saying before it's a, it's about sort of shedding baselines uh, I expect to hear a certain something what, when I get into music I hear a vocal and my you know a part of my brain is triggered um, but you know you're listening to to music deconstructed in a sense you know yeah yeah you know and I, I you just said that reminded me too i was thinking about how you don't know what you're going to expect with with playboy but you do with currency and i'm kind of the same way with there's a band Chevelle you probably know Chevelle mm -hmm. i well, haven't heard of them oh no they're a great no. hard rock band oh I'm, oh uh c e uh sorry c h e v yeah, e -V, e -L -L -E yeah, yeah, Chevelle. Okay, I've heard of them. No, I haven't gotten too into it. Great band, but... hard rock band, and I've I've always enjoyed their music. It, but like you're saying, when they put out an album, you know what you're getting. You're really just mm -hmm. wondering where's the bar of quality going to be. Like, how much are you going to like it? You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it it is interesting how like with some artists, yeah, you're hoping in a way you almost hope it's more of the same. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also really really love artists who keep growing and evolving and changing their sound because then it's like i have no idea what's coming next and i'm so excited right. to find out what it is absolutely yeah <laughs> it makes uh, new music fun you know it's yeah it's yeah yeah it's great well we're we're 48 minutes okay pretty good run um you got any closing thoughts you want to throw on here for this conversation um not not really you know i th I think we had a great conversation honestly i'm very glad that we were able to do this yeah you know, this is honestly too. a dream come true for me to be able to like <laughs> put all my thoughts about cardi out there and and you know the 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 layers that i think it has and, and the various sort of artistic uh analogies that i can make um so thank you for that opportunity absolutely it's a great analogy i was really I, when you hit me up with that i was like oh that's perfect perfect i'm glad no i'm glad um <laughs> I, I was I saw your video on you know reaching out to the community. I I thought it was a great idea. I love the other videos on it, um, and and I I think you know it, it's it's the sort of your community is great. It's it's sort of very ripe for this conversation. Yeah, um, and it's a conversation that people are having. But it, you know, like I was saying earlier, it's it's understandably so. It's hard to find a circle of like minded people on something so specific. You know, it it's, is. It's not a testament to the people that you're around or, or their music taste or anything like that. But we're just talking about something that hits a very specific niche. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. And it, it has been a lot of fun for me because so far every person has been so different that I've talked to, mm -hmm. but the one consistency is their love for music. And it's Absolutely. just, it's so fantastic to see already such a wide variety of people who have the same amount of love and for, for completely different artists too, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. so it's been really neat for me. Yeah, you know, this whole thing kind of spawned from my wanting to interact with people, but when I would try and do it on a live stream, it was always just 
a disaster. Like the, I can't keep up with chat and there's all these different questions. And I was like, I just want to interact with people somehow in a way that was right. meaningful. I was like, well, fuck it. Let's just do one-on-ones, man. Like that's the best way to go. <laughs> no, I like it. I agree. It's, it, it's very fun. Uh, it's, it's very engaging. You know, it's, it's cool to see people who are like, Oh, we're all part of the same community. Yeah. On uh, Bob, the pop up channel here. And you know, <laughs> yeah. we got, we got, uh, uh, we got a voice to, to, to come through to. Yeah. It's I been fun. It. It's been a lot of fun. Um, well, I'm glad, I'm glad we got to sit down and do this. This is great. Yes, sir. Um, since you're in the Bay area, I'll, we'll have to try and, uh, something else I want to do. I think it'd be fun. It's a little trickier, but sure. I want to do like a meetup where we all just meet up at like faction brewery or something like that and kick, sure. kick back and have a couple beers and talk music and just chill. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I think that'd be awesome. I'm very down. Of course, that bumps the age to 21 and over. So all the 18 and over that are happy about maybe being here, well, you can't go there. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, I, uh... I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun. No, absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm very down for that anytime. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right. Well, I guess we'll call it. This was episode five, Conversations with the Community. Nime did a fantastic job. Too. That was a great analogy, the impressionism and, and classic art compared to music today and the changes that are happening. I really enjoyed it. I think, I hope, I hope some people who listen to this, who maybe they're not into Playboy, they go, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll give them another shot, check them out, you know? Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Huh. All right, well, well. I appreciate you, man. Thank yeah, you so much. No problem, man. It was my pleasure. And uh, everybody online watching, we'll see you again soon. All right.